Hey guys, Pickle 700 here, and in today's video, I'm going to be adding LED warning lights to my bike trailer. In a couple earlier videos, I showed me adding these 12 LED ones to the back, and a couple videos after that, I showed installing these 6 LED ones on the front of it. So, I have some more to go in my bike trailer. I already have tons of reflector reflective tape all along it everywhere there's tons of it so the thing's pretty safe in that sense but I thought it'd be good to add some LED lights too so these are lights here I ordered these on Amazon I actually ordered a six six of them but they gave me eight so that's cool I still have to figure out where I have to, where I'm gonna put the other two since I only plan to have six because I also have a light bar that I'm gonna put on but I'll show you that later so off camera, I've marked out all my holes with where I'm going to put the different lights. So I'm going to just have to drill a whole bunch of holes here. So I'll come back once all the holes have been drilled. I have all of our main holes drilled, but as you can see, if I put our wires through, it's tricky to do one-handed here. There's these other two holes right there. And right there, which also need to be drilled, so I'm going to drill those smaller holes on all six of these now. So I have all my holes drilled, and now I'm going to show you the process, of, the process of installing each one. So first we have this foam gasket that will go in the back to help with uh, any water getting into it, I assume, or it will probably help some with the vibrations a little bit. So once we have this, that will go over like that we can put the cord of the light through it and also through the hole in the frame of the trailer and we can take our machine screws poke them through the hole and through the trailer and then we'll put the nut on the other side and then tighten the screw So a while after that last clip, and a lot of work after that last clip, I finally have all of these, all eight of these lights in. So as you can see, two on the back, and then on the side here we have one right there, one right there, one right there facing the front, another one right there facing the front. And then again on this side, and there's this is not a wire, wireless access point, but I think that's kind of funny. So now I have to splice all of these together, so I'll come back once I got all of that done. So I'm going to give you a little update here. So I've kind of changed my from my original plans. I'm going to have these two lights and the light bar all the ones facing the back on a bit their own circuit so I can turn them on separately from the rest in case I only need the rear lights on but other than that I'm almost have all the others spliced together this will be my cord right here that will connect to the battery this will supply the whole circuit of all the lights except the back ones they go up to this one right here it does that one they go down here and then they have they splice right there to do the those other four on the corners. Same with those other two right there. And then they come up to do this one right here. So basically all I have to do at this point is run this one probably down here to a short piece of uh, cab tire. And then do the same with this one and then have like the... And then have their own circuit come down there to the battery again where I'll have it switched separately. So, I'll update you once these guys are spliced. I now have all these backlights spliced. So, the light bar is going to be coming next week. Not this week. But I did leave these the, the ends of these crimps right here open for the light bar to splice onto, which will go up here. But for now, I'll show you all of these lights. So, one of these cords will operate all of the lights except for these back two 
and then the other one will just operate these back to. So now I'm going to select the mode I want on them. So the way you select the mode is by touching the ground wire on this cord, which or which would normally be the ground wire, which is attached to the yellow sync wire on the actual lights to positive or negative. I can't remember what it is on this one, and it will change the flash pattern. So I'm going to hook up them to this 12 volt battery. I'll start with the back ones. Um, let's hope these are not shorted. No, the lights are coming on, so that's a pretty good indicator that it's not shorted. So this is a little tricky to do here one-handed. Turned off the lights, hopefully it's a little bit easier to see, so I'm going to put on the positive, and I'm going to decide what, what mode I like best. So this is the stock mode that it comes with. Now I'm going to go through the different modes. So I got the flash pattern I want on the back of it. They're not in sync, but they're doing the same pattern. So now I'm just going to decide what I want for all the side ones, and it's probably going to be the exact same pattern, but I'm not exactly sure. So this is what I have for the lights on the side. They're all in sync except for one that I have as close to sync as I can, but I accidentally got that one out of sync and now without disconnecting all my splices there's no way to get it back in sync but it's kind of hard to tell so these two are in sync on the same mode these side ones are on sync in the same mode and this one right here is in the same sync mode as this one but then this one is doing a different sync pattern than these ones so I don't know, it would be kind of hard to notice if, if you're not looking for it, but it does kind of bother me. But I'm just going to have to live with it because there's no really way of changing it. It's a few hours later and I actually got that one synced. I just chopped off the sync wire close to where it was spliced and kind of cut into one of the positives so I could get it synced. Not sure if you can tell through there. It wasn't sync for a second, but they're flashing at the same speed at least. So, um, not sure if you can tell. They don't show up that good on camera just because they strobe super quick. But they're they're not in sync, but they're doing the same pattern. So every once in a while, they'll happen to be flashing at the same time and be in sync. So now it is time to install the light bar. So this is an 18-inch light bar right here to give you a little size comparison on how it fits on the top. It's not quite as wide as the trailer, but if I flip this power cord around here, this is sort of roughly how it's gonna fit. So this is just amber, there's no white on it, so amber only, and it can do seven different patterns. So now we're start to hook up the electrical side of it. So this is actually the next day, so they have a whole bunch of stuff in here that I had to take to do some electrical work. Um, so just don't mind all the crap in there. And now we need to get the power from right here. Never mind, right here, because this is this will be tied into our back backlights only. So I'm going to do a little time lapse of the installation of the light bar.
rear light bar is now installed. So this is on the same circuit as our rear lights. So if I turn on that switch, we'll get everything on including the light bar, but I can turn it off separately. So we just have these little lights on. Not sure when I'd ever do that, but you can. So turning this on, I'll go through the different modes. We have this one. Here's another one. This is a sweep from left to right. This is a sweep from right to left. So if your vehicle or the trailer was parked there and you wanted the vehicles to go to that side of you, you'd put it on that mode. This is just back and forth, strobe, then solid on, then back off. I like this one though. And then you can also have it on with all of the other lights. So this is everything on the trailer on. So guys, let's see this trailer in the dark. So I'll turn off the lights here. Then the garage door. This one will turn back on me if I'm not careful if I move too much. So I'll turn on just the rear lights. As you can see, it lights up on the wall really good. And we have their side lights on. Not sure if you can tell on the wall, but it is super bright back here. This thing lights it up like crazy. And I can also turn on the rest of the lights. So now this is the whole trailer on. This thing keeps coming on on me. Cover it with some tape. So this is the whole trailer on. Probably too late to warn anyone with epilepsy to not watch this because everyone's had a seizure by now. So, sorry about that, boys, with the epilepsy. So, most of the time, though, I'll probably only ever just need the rear lights. Oh, oh those were actually in synchronization for a second. But this light bar on top really helps with the visibility. So, I'll turn these all off now. So that's about it. If you have any other things you think I should add to this trailer, let me know. There is one other thing I'll be installing. So with this battery right here, there's really no protection on it for over discharging. Like you really don't want to discharge a deeps or a lead acid battery any like too much under its voltage. Like once you're under 12 volts, you should really stop because you don't want to discharge it too much because it will never recharge to the same potential as it would originally. So I'm going to be installing a over discharge protection thing that will, I can set my voltage to that I don't want the battery to discharge under. So let me know what you think I should set that voltage to. I think I'll just set it to probably ele like 11 volts so it won't discharge any under, it will cut off the battery if it goes under 11 volts. So that will, will be good. And eventually maybe I'll get a bigger battery. This is just, I believe, a nine amp hour. Yes, it is nine amp hour. So it's still okay, but would like to get a bigger battery eventually. So guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.